Hi there, welcome to this video review of the ZX Spectrum Next. Now I'd like to approach this not from a programmer's point of view because even though this thing has got so many uh, potential avenues for programming, um, I'm looking at it from a nostalgic gamer's point of view. So I bought it on Kickstarter, here it is, here's the unit, this is mine, I paid £170 for it. And some people say if you back something on Kickstarter, you shouldn't be allowed to review it because you've kind of funded its creation, you're part of the business. I completely disagree, especially with this. I've paid £170 for this product. I waited two years after they said it was supposed to be here. And I'm really hoping that it will uh, fulfill all the requirements that I have for a modern Spectrum. Uh, so we'll get into all that later. But um, being a classic Spectrum fan, I still have games on cassette tape. You can see them up here. Look, there's Booty and uh, Treasure Island Dizzy, Nigel Mansell's Grand Prix. And I uh, got things like uh, Fantasy World Dizzy here, Advanced Tactical Fighter, and all games that I played in my youth, and CJ in the USA, which the Games Radar team bought me once for my birthday, but uh, I didn't have that when I was a kid. So I want to try loading all my tapes and play it from a nostalgic gamer's point of view. So that's how this review is going to pan out. So let's get to it. The box looks very swanky and deluxe, although I was disappointed to find that the cardboard insert was ripped when I opened it. Now, oh, apparently this great. wasn't from someone taking the machine out too roughly in it's the ripped, factory, yeah. but instead the it's weight of the ideal. spectrum yeah. damaged it in transit, according to the email updates, which is fair enough. They've done a fantastic job making this machine look and feel like the real deal. So a couple of mistakes are understandable and acceptable. Okay, here we go. It looks like a ZX Spectrum. How wonderful. So it's got the basic instructions about the keys and the keyboard feels good. I can see why they spent their time on it. It even sounds like a Spectrum. Yeah, when you push the keys. So amazing. Right, well, uh, I'm going to set it up on my 4K TV first and see if I can load a game. And then after that, perhaps I'll do some direct video capture so we can have a look at the advanced stuff. So I'm using this machine as a modern way to play my old ZX Spectrum games. So I get to enjoy modern day benefits like an HDMI connection, which is excellent, making the games look great on my 4K TV. Compared to the RGB output of my ZX Spectrum Plus 2, which sadly has ghosting, it's ultra solid, though I must say that I was a little disappointed to discover that the Next doesn't come with an HDMI cable in the box. You also get SD card support, and one comes with it, which means you can update the firmware and also try out the pre-installed demos and games. There's Dizzy and the Crystal Kingdom on there to play, which looks and particularly sounds superb, but no sign yet of the brand new Oliver Twins designed wonderful Dizzy. Apparently that's on its way, so look out for a review of that on this channel in the future. Dizzy and the Crystal Kingdom is actually a great way to show off one of the other amazing new features that make this a truly next generation spectrum, and that's the processor acceleration mode. Look at the water effect, beautiful. Slow down though. Ah, okay. So presumably this is where I can turn up the speed of the processor. Uh, okay, let's try seven megahertz. Look at that, it works! Ah, oh, awesome. That's amazing. Now the old ZX Spectrum ran at a blisteringly fast 3.5 megahertz, and no, that's not a mistake. Modern machines are literally a thousand times faster. But rather than give the next to one gigahertz processor or something silly, instead, this still boots up at that same 3.5 megahertz clock rate. Only now, there's a button you can press if you boot it into next mode, which lets you toggle between extra clock speeds. 7 megahertz makes most games run better, although it can speed up the music with humorous effects like in Booty here. <laughs> There's also a 14 megahertz and even a 28 megahertz mode. You can take a look here at Star Wars being run at the four different processor speeds, and you can see that the one in the bottom right is actually unplayable, whereas the second and third ones are pretty good. It's amazing that we actually put up with the top left one though, I mean, that's 
It's so jerky as to be borderline unplayable. Now I mentioned at the start that I wanted to use my Next to play my original games from cassette, which is totally possible thanks to the Next supporting all old hardware and loading options. However, I had massive trouble loading my tapes. Come on. Yes? No. Disappointingly, after 30 years, I still can't seem to load the 128k version of Treasure Island Dizzy, which is so disappointing because I've heard the music on YouTube and I want it through my speakers. Actually, wait, scratch that. Having just been editing this video, I thought I'd get some footage of the game not loading and I must have just hit the game just right because it worked. <laughs> Never. I've never played it. It's been 30 years and I've finally got it to load! Ah! The Next actually has hardware-based emulation for all the old Spectrum types. The 48K, we also get the 128, the plus 2, the plus 3, and it boots into whichever you want until you change it back again. But even so, getting the right audio signal just to get it to recognise the tape is very, very difficult without an original Spectrum tape deck. I had to play the tapes from a USB cassette player using Logic Pro 10 to measure the decibel level before using its gain plugins to boost the signal and running my MacBook's volume at full. Even this wasn't wholly reliable and I'm sad to say that I've actually spent about 70% of my time with the Next so far just trying to load my old games. It's that difficult. I just... decisions. Oh no, it's crashed again! <laughs> <laughs> but there is one more fantastic plus point to using old cassettes. If you're using Next Mode, the entirety of the Next's RAM can be snapshotted to an SD card, meaning once a game's been loaded from cassette into RAM, you can save a snapshot at the title screen and then in future load that same game again in just seconds. It's an absolutely wonderful feature. The Next can, therefore, be used to play emulation files from another computer and it can load .tap and .disk images, but you can't load TZX files without the Raspberry Pi access accelerator, which is a bit odd, but naturally some of the Spectrum's library is still under copyright anyway, though some games have been released into the public domain, and I don't condone piracy, so I wouldn't condone putting every single Spectrum game on your SD card, because that is pirating. But in terms of playing my own old games, saving them to SD card once I've loaded them is just like keeping them in a Spectrum's memory. I mean, that's literally what's happening, so it's all good. The ports at the front actually support Sega Mega Drive controllers, so I've been able to play the likes of Who Dares Wins 2 and Nigel Mansell's Grand Prix with far better control input than I ever have before. Just choose Kempston from the menu and it works just fine in most instances. All of these enhancements have felt like a worthwhile investment considering audio cassettes aren't going to last forever. And the enhanced hardware capabilities of the Next, with its broader spectrum of colours and a lack of overlapping colours if you want to switch them off, means that there's a viable new platform for games. It's also a wonderful way to get into coding as it comes with Next Basic as well as the old 48k Basic modes as before, as well as the command line, so you can program for the processor directly. Now at present, that's beyond my capabilities, I mean I can pretty much just do 10 print hello, 20 go to 10 run. But in terms of the benefits of using this machine over my aging plus two model, I have to say I'm very pleased, especially as the Nexts are already fetching up to 600 pounds on eBay. So I'm glad I got in when I did. Now, Mr. Henrik Olifers has stated that you don't need to pay that much for a Next as he and his team are launching a second Kickstarter campaign so you can get one of the next batch of Nexts if you'd like to join the fun. And that should only be 150 or so. I'll just see what he says. Now, it says on the back of the box that you should get ready to fall in love with a personal computer all over again. Well, I'm not sure I totally love it as it is a very difficult relationship, but it is an authentic one. I remember so many hours of my youth were spent trying to load Nigel Mansell's Grand Prix, so the chance to relive that frustration in 2020 is bittersweet. But the results are undeniably fantastic when it does work, so from my point of view, I give the next 4 out of 5 stars. But I'm sure it's worth a higher score if you learn its workings inside out and start making your own games. Thanks very much for watching to the end. Please do take a look around my channel for more retro and modern gaming videos, as well as a video diary as I write and record my new music album, The Ghost Train. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.
Thanks very much. Cheers.